Welcome to the In My Opinion Show with Ronald Barry Robinson and friends. Seen on the internet 24 hours, 7 days a week. To view, go to and type in, in capital letters, RBR, IMO, and then go to videos. To view our extensive catalog of shows. You can also view the In My Opinion Shows on Com Michigan, uh, Flint, Michigan Comcast Cable Channel 17 every Saturday at 6 and every Wednesday at 8.30. You can also view the In My Opinion Show on Detroit, Michigan Comcast Cable Channel 68 seven days a week. I want to welcome our millions of viewers worldwide and especially my talented co-host. We have Mr. Henry Hatter. Hi, Ron. Hi, Henry. We have Mrs. Jackie Wilson. Oh, Jackie That's Williams. Okay. I don't know why I'm <laughs> okay. Hi, Ron. And we have the diva, Miss Denise Smith Allen. Right. Welcome all to the In My Opinion show. Hi, Ron. We're, we're going to talk about immigration reform. President Obama took a historic legacy defining step when he announced a plan to protect millions of undocumented immigrants from, depo from deportation, infuriating Republicans but satisfying immigrants who have fought for years for such relief. The President's plan will allow undocumented immigrants who are parents of U.S. citizens and legal permanent residents, known as green card holders, to legally live and work in the country for a period of three years, allow foreign workers trained in high-tech fields to stay in the country. The U.S. is a country of immigrants. Every man, woman, and child in the United States historically is an immigrant, even our Native Americans, who migrated when most of the world was connected by landmass. President Obama said he was forced to act because, because of Congress's inability to pass a bill to overhaul the nation's broken immigration systems. He also stated, 30 years for such a bill is long, is long enough. President, President Obama also stated recently, the Republicans have had six years to pass a comprehensive bill, but have sat on their hands. Obama's actions are moral and just. Historically, Alexander Hamilton, one of the signers of the Constitution, stated, "Determining the naturalization rule will leave a discretion will leave discretion to the legislature." But most importantly, he didn't address if Congress refused to act, what procedures would occur. Madison, on the other hand stated America is indebted to immigrants for her settlement and prosperity. Let's go with you, uh, Denise. What, what do you think about the uh, uh, immigration uh, situation? And um, President Obama is um, executive order. Well, I think it's timely, uh, personally. I think that if you're looking at people who have been in this country and are working and are not paying uh, taxes, state, federal, um, local taxes, then we are missing uh, a large percentage of income that could rightly be um, helpful to our economy. And I think, on the other hand, for those persons who are here and are fearful of uh, being deported and are, are here who are not uh, felons or doing um, you know, unlawful acts, I think they should be given an opportunity because I think you alluded to the fact that uh, this country is a country of immigrants. Some forced immigrants, some not. But the idea is we are a, um, I, I don't necessarily want to call it a melting pot at this point, but I, but I will say that uh, we have enough diversity here in this country that I think there's, there's room for all. So that's my position. Okay. That's a great position. Uh, Jackie, what, is your, what are your thoughts? Hi, um, I'm actually on the line of Denise. Um, you guys brought up some very good points mm -hmm. because if you look at the news, um, they missed a lot of good points that you guys just made, which was that if they have a criminal record, they are not considered for this. And I think people bypassed that because they were so angry with the bill. But um, I think if they have been here working and showing that they have been in good standing, I do think they deserve a chance, just like we have given everybody else a chance that has come here. So I think it's time, like she said, to have them pay into the economy um, being here because the green card doesn't allow them to do that. But this would give them an opportunity to help the economy grow. And also, too, you know, uh, uh, with this act uh, by uh, President uh, Obama, this is not just for Hispanics. Right. All right. This is for uh, 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 all immigrants, all right, that fit that criteria that he described in his, you know, in his message. Uh, 
So I want to uh, dispel any notion that it's only for Hispanics, but it's for uh, 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 all nationalities that you know that that, that have come here uh, to the United States uh, uh, illegally and had children, which would be they would be become naturally uh, uh, civil. I mean, uh, Naturalized. Uh, naturalized citizens. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hatter, what is your thoughts? Well, uh, <clears throat> first of all, we're a nation of laws. The laws are permanently set in boilerplate. And we're guided by a constitution. The constitution says that people who are naturalized become citizens. But we can't have people coming across the border every time uh, they want to get away from their land. You were quoting Hamilton and you were quoting um, yes. Madison. That was then. This is now. We've become a very complex nation with many people. That uh, Our population is continuously growing. We're stripping out our resources. We have difficulty providing the wherewithal with the population that we have. And But I will say for immigration, the people Hispanics and Mexicans provide a lot to this economy. Without them, we wouldn't have the quality of life that we do. And I think that immigration provides for Hispanics. It helps to normalize relationships between African Americans and Hispanics because it was not always very good. We were opposites. Uh, but I think that what he did here will impair, will uh, repair some of the the schism between Hispanics and, and African Americans. But uh, um, to that end, I believe that what the president's done through executive order, Americans will catch up to and they, we will normalize. The Americans as a whole will end up uh, accepting what the president has done as part of the legal landscape of the law, just as they did with the American uh, Affordable Care Act. Uh, those kind of things will never leave the legal landscape. They're part of it. And uh, for the first time, the president demonstrated that he was a real leader. He took it on the chin. He passed this legislation. He infuriated the Republicans. But by doing that, we still have to go back and look at, it's kind of dangerous to do that. And besides, if you don't have the opposing side making the case for immigration, generally the stuff gets chipped away by legislation further down the road. But I think, in this case, the American people will accept responsibility for what the president's done and will normalize that over time. Just like Abraham Lincoln did. You wouldn't be sitting at this table had Abraham Lincoln not done a similar thing. The Emancipation Proclamation exactly. was a case where the president of the United States used an executive order to free the slaves. In the southern states. In the southern states. It doesn't matter where, mm -hmm. but it became part of the legal landscape of the country. Sure. And there was Johnson and some of the others tried to uh, reverse that. But the American people said, no, mm -hmm. we're going to keep it the way it is. Republicans and Democrats are only part of this picture until the American people decide that this should become a normal part of the landscape. The law, it will never be settled and will never become uh, normalized, except through that process. And as we go down the road, you will see that this no longer will become a something that Republicans and Democrats will haggle over. Well, that fits into... But we should never do this as a normal practice. We have a constitution. We need to follow the constitution. Well, exactly. But you know, that also fits into uh, this, uh, some more information that I want to share. Okay, the White House pointed to the actions of previous presidents, including 
Republican presidents Ronald Reagan and George Bush, who issued executive orders granting legal status to immigrants. In 1942, President Truman issued executive orders to, to desegregate the U.S. military. President Lincoln issued executive orders, the Emancip Emancipation uh, Proclam Proclamation, freeing slaves in the southern states. These were moral decisions. Let's cut to the chase here. The Republicans know their power base is diminishing rapidly. Their gig is up. The, dem the demographics are changing, and in the next 20 years, white males will no longer hold any majorities in America, in America, and that's why they are afraid of, and that's why they resist. That, that's why they resisted former Democratic President William Jefferson Clinton, and are putting up so much resistance to anything uh, Democrat in Democrat uh, presidents. Democratic President Obama presents. In addition to immigration reform, see, it's more, it's more in my, in my opinion, it's more involved than just immigration, you know, reform, okay? Uh, 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 it goes to, I'll just read this a little bit further. This is also why Republicans has instituted voter restrictions in 27 states governed by, governed by Republican governors and, and legislatures that will surely hamper citizens' voting rights for African Americans and other minorities, students, white females, elderly. Their excuse, which is a damn lie, that there is, a, there is rampant vote, voter fraud. A recent study of millions of votes cast, it was, term, it was determined by a government watchdog, only less than 10 votes cast were questionable. It probably were Republican votes. Ron, it's <laughs> dangerous to separate the white male from the constitutional government. That is dangerous. Does any should, they, they need to be part of this whole uh, mix of uh, public policy development. Then they need to get on. They need to. Then they need to get on the bus, Henry. Well, they can't get on the bus because you want them to get on the bus. It's okay. Be, you know, it's a natural and normal. We are, can I, we're play in a divided. Can I, can we're I in a divided a government right now. You yeah. know what I mean? The Democrats uh, and the Republicans. You know, uh, 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 nothing is going. Nothing is happening for the American public. All right. Uh, but Ron, let me just finish this right here, please. Does anybody see the racism? And abundant, abundant lies here. Racism, racism, racism is surely not in the best interest of any of, of, of anyone, governments or nations that believe in democracy. Democracy standards must cross and meet the criteria for all, whether it is genders, ethnos, morality, and equality. I'm gonna listen to Denise. No, I, my question is 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 towards you, Henry, because you had made a, yeah. a statement early on when yeah. you were speaking about. Um, uh, I guess you were talking about Hispanics yeah. and blacks being yes. opposites, yes. and I wanted you to expound on that because I'm trying to understand what you meant. Well, you know, I, I was told by a reliable source that gangs in California, and this is only one incident, they kill blacks and nobody ever investigated. Okay. And not gangs, only that. And what gangs? Who, you're talking about Latino gangs? Yes. yes. Okay. And but that's not all of it. But we've had uh, factions. We've had a divided relationship with Hispanics and the blacks for a long time. Why is that? Why is I that? Do you I don't think? know why. I don't know why it is. Mm -hmm. But did you know? Um, I could go back and tell you that um, Hispanics uh, they are a small minority in the Michigan population. But they out earn African Americans in Michigan, and most of their their income comes from people who work in fields. Mm -hmm. But see that also too. That's you know there's a lot of Hispanics that work in fields. There's a lot of other uh, 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 folk of color that work in fields too. We but there's also Hispanic doctors, yeah. and nurses, not very many business people. There's a lot, Henry. No, no. Okay. Uh, Maybe uh, not in Michigan. Okay. Right, Michigan. Right. Maybe not in Michigan. Uh, uh, business folk, uh, uh, truck drivers, uh, 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 developers. I mean, it's 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 a whole lot. And we gotta. I think we gotta move away from this. You know, this notion that you know when you see when you see a Hispanic person. All right. Okay. He's gotta. He's gotta be. He or she's gotta be in the fields. Okay, and and you can't trust them. That's that's bullcrap. That's stereotypical. My stuff. my point you know I mean? is that they work harder. That they work harder. Well, well, that, 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 you put people in the field. You got the yeah, workers all across. Yeah. All across. Henry. Henry. Who does the state of Michigan 
uh, mainly hired to work on highways. Or with highways? who get contracts. Highways? The, the highways. lowest bidder? The lowest bidder? The lowest bidder? That's what I hired. I want to check it. No, the lowest bidder, whoever now, the lowest bidder is. You're arguing things that you don't know yet. But you need but to I want to talk that. about something that Ron said, which was really good. And what he said was, because I was just watching that on a documentary, what it said was that the Republicans is always a year ahead of our thinking. Mm -hmm. And this was really good because what it said was, the reason why they're changing all of these voter laws is because in the last election, Obama couldn't have won without Hispanic voting. Mm -hmm. And they realize that if they make them citizens and they can vote, they know yeah. that we're, it is going to devastate the polls because they'll have a right to vote where they couldn't before. Mm -hmm. And this is why they're doing all the different rules where you have to have ID and all of these different things is because they forecast where the um, population was high of the sure. vote. And that's who they're hitting. Mm -hmm. It's statistics to prove it. Yeah, but and, and this is where they go. They're not hitting areas like Michigan was not one of them. So they're not hitting areas where Texas was one of them. They're hitting areas where vote was high in the Hispanic community. So they realize where their weak spots were, and that's where they're putting in different laws to. Who puts in the different laws? The ones, the governor, most of them are Republican governors. But they have a legislature. And, and, and Republican does, legislature. They have a legislature. Hang on. They have a legislature. Laws are made by legislatures and governors. And there are so many lawsuits the because they gave falsified information that said that there was a lot of fraud. They have found no fraud. Um, um, cases out of millions. Yeah. That, that was, yeah. That okay. was uh, I don't well, know what could, the case was. Can I just share this yeah, with you? This sure. was an article that I pulled up today, and I'll just read just a small portion here, and it's talking about the Republican coalition is older and whiter than Democratic coalition, and the people who turned out to vote in midterm elections are older and white than the people who turned out to vote in presidential elections. And then they provide a table here, and then, you know, and the table's pretty self-explanatory. It talks about white-aged 30 and up, and these, this is the percentage here, it's like 69%. Blacks aged 30 and up is 9.7%. This was in 2010. In 2012, 64.0, 10.8. So, I mean, numbers, you know, they can lie, but overall, they have, this is kind of like a base analysis yeah. of what's going sure. on here. And one of the things that happens typically, I mean, we could sit back and be, um, you know, what they call Monday morning or Monday evening quarterbacks, mm -hmm. you know, chair ar armchair quarterbacks, <laughs> and talk about what happened. Sure. But the bottom line is, we are remiss, whether, you know, blacks, whether you are whatever aisle you're on, if we don't do what we need to do, because right. these numbers are abysmal. You know, I don't care how you cut it. The numbers Absolutely. speak. And so I'm saying, you know, we just have to do a better job of turning out to vote. Mm -hmm. We have to get to the polls. We have to do our job. And then the people who we elect, then we have to help make them accountable. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. You've that. got to make them accountable. Right? But run. Not, not because they're your next door neighbor or your friend. Mm -hmm. You know, what no. the hell are they doing for, you know, what, what are they doing for, you know, uh, 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 the districts or, 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 or cities or whatever they, you know, that, they, that they're from? Right. Okay. Ron, when you go in to vote, do you have to show your ID? Do I? Do you, well, yes. Yeah. Sometime? I have to show mine all the time. Yeah. What's wrong with it? Well, the thing is, is you don't have to. See, that's another misnomer. You don't have to have a, a pictured ID to vote. You don't have to have a state ID to vote. All right? Well, if you don't have a, if you don't have no, you ID. Don't. But you do you, have you, that ID. No. Yes, you do. All you have to do is sign an affidavit. And, or you, well, you, you may have a You have to have some indication right. that you that are who you say you are. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't believe that we should allow people to vote without IDs. We've done it for years. Yeah, you must show who you are. That protects the integrity of the democracy. I personally don't necessarily have a problem with that. But again, now with, with your voter ID, to have to show your uh, picture ID, that's overkill. But see, that, that's the, overkill. this thing, uh, the Democrats have been saying it for a long time, when I was chairman of the party. They'd say... The Democratic well, Party, Henry? No, Republican Party. Mm -hmm. no. <clears throat> they would say to... they would. I now remember, you guys remember the mayor, mm -hmm. and he said that uh, Republicans were intimidating black voters. 
I am the chair of the Republican Party, okay? And I said to them, and I challenged, I took the case to the journal and said, I want you, the first time that we have a, a, a criticism that the Republicans are intimidating black voters, I want to be there. Mm -hmm. I want you to make an issue of it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the, the, the problem was that Republicans didn't go into black areas. They, they wouldn't, <clears throat> they would never spend their money in black areas where they don't get, only going to get 5% of the black vote. They won't do that. And so that whole situation went away. They couldn't prove it in Michigan, that Republicans were intimidating black voters because there was no such thing. That was a trumped up thing to try to embarrass the Republicans. Well, based upon what you just here's, said. Here's what, as I recall it, because I remember going to the voting pool Vote, and, I, and I can recall the there, there, were, there were people who had not normally been at the sites who were there and they were standing over the people who were signing folks in and that was intimidating. Now we don't know who those persons were. People made the assumption that you they were. You can have challengers. Yes, involved. you can. You yeah. can. But this is what I'm saying. All don't along the process, the process hadn't been like that, and for that to, to to occur the way it did, and then there were all these other things that were being said. You were reading something into that that wasn't there. That was I, right, right, I, I just Republicans I just said that. don't care about uh, going into black neighborhoods that don't that don't uh, yield any votes. 5% of them. Well, they don't 100. have to go in there. They make a rule like the man that was on down south. I'm not sure it was Mississippi. He voted every year, and I think he was 89. And he couldn't vote this year because he doesn't drive. He doesn't have an ID that's updated. And because he doesn't have a valid ID, they didn't let him vote this year. So this was the first time he didn't vote and mm. since he was able to vote. And he cried because... Mm. He didn't have money to spend on an ID. He said he had to choose between voting and eating. Well, he could have used an absentee vote. Well, he probably wasn't aware of it. And so who possibly. told him that? Well, the Democrats should be telling him that. You guys should so, be telling so him that. So I don't have to have an ID, but I can just do an absentee ballot, and I can be yeah. anybody I want to be. Yeah, you can go. You have yeah. to have. There's a way to do it, but you have to qualify to get the absentee vote. I voted absentee this time. So when you qualify, so I wonder what he would have had to do to qualify. Well, all you have to do is go to the township of the city government. I didn't say absentee vote. I said a provisional ballot. Well, it, there's uh, two different things, yeah. aren't they? Yes. No, but we she was talking about voting at the polls. That's what I'm talking about too. Um, you walk in the poll, and you don't have ID. Okay, give me a, you know, give me a, an affidavit. You should I'm never working. go unprepared. I'm saying what I'm saying. Government I'm saying we know, but there's a whole lot of voters. people out there that don't know. But right? the, why don't they know? And I'm telling people you out there people and out there in the land, for it, Ron. when you vote, you don't need ID but or, you, or, 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 or picture, uh, picture ID. The Democrats if you don't have it, you get an affidavit and you can vote. And if and if and if they will if they won't allow you, then you get with the with the election officials. But Ziran, the Democrats and the unions and church officials, and probably many of you, go out and encourage people to sign up to vote. And you don't. Republicans don't. Do and, that. and I take. Oh, you don't. You, take, you don't encourage people to vote. No. And I take exception. You don't have to, to huh? No, no. <laughs> oh, and I take exception to what you were <laughs> saying. We don't, Republicans don't in, vote. We bans and do that. Republicans don't go into black neighborhoods, all right, because they, they don't, where they don't, they don't, they don't get, get but a few vote votes. That's racism, in my opinion. Yeah, it is. So you and it's and created choose. by those people who live in those areas. So my area is not of, of your... But you are not going to find a Republican area coming in and barging on you if you don't want them there. They're not going to come in. Okay. That's a rule of thumb. Well, Republicans out there, you can come into my neighborhood anytime. Well, it's about All time right. you invited them in. And Democrats and, 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 every other, and every other party, you can come into my neighborhood anytime and, Thank and you, talk Ron. to the people. We're growing now. Okay. And, and, I, and for Mia, Mia, uh, Mia in Utah, uh, I hope she here sees this program. If not, I'll send her a copy of it so she'll know that. Who? Mia. Mia, uh, what's Mia's last name? I don't know her last name, but she was a Republican. She, yes, she was. She won. She won. Oh, okay. And so that the uh, gentleman in North Carolina won. Mm -hmm. He was a senator. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're proud of it. Things will change. The country will change, and we will rise. Mm -hmm.
I hope so. Well, okay. I hope All so. Right. I Mia Love was her name. Yeah, Mia Love. And I'm going to invite her here, and I hope uh, for a fundraiser for the Tuskegee Airmen. And I want you guys to come and meet her. She's Absolutely. A very, she's a sweetheart. You're a lover. She's smart, too. That's very important. Yeah. Great. She Great. looks like you, Denise. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I really have to see Mia now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> she's about as tall as you. Uh, any last uh, uh, remarks? Well, I'm glad, Ron, that you that we're growing a little bit. Mm -hmm. We need to have these knockdown, drag out fights on to, to discern ourselves about the truth. Well, people need because to know the, the truth and stop straddling the fence. You know what I mean? And bull <laughs> and bullshitting the public out here. And, and they got to tell the people what time it is. And, and you All see, right? Ron, the the reason that uh, we're getting better is because the American people sees that uh, agenda, took it away from the Republicans and Democrats. That's why you have to to see all of these changes that you're seeing. With that, this has been a very wonderful conversation, but we must, unfortunately, we must bring this very important and uh, in, in, uh, topic to a, to a close. Uh, but until next time, this is Ronald Bay Robinson and friends saying stay focused.